it's me that's talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. You. You, you. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to My Guy Reviews, the podcast, the pre-chat, pre-chat intro. Do you want me to do the intro and then get onto the pre-chat chat? Or uh, do you want to do the intro? Yeah. You haven't done one in a while. Um, I haven't done the uh, research, so I guess I do one new. It's what you okay, always do. Starting, starting, you ready? In three, two, your intro, one. Welcome back, everybody, to My Guy Reviews, the podcast. I am your host, My Guy Briggs, and I'm joined by My Guy Monkey. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm eating toast. How are you doing? <laughs> yes, good. Good, yes. It always catches you off guard, it seems. Uh, but we're here, we're back. Um, as it is, this, it's it's midway through January, by the time this podcast comes out. Um, so people are still saying Happy New Year, Happy New Year, listeners. Thank you for sticking with us. Happy New um, Year, yeah. Happy Christmas. Oh, Merry <laughs> Christmas. Um, we've had a little break over Christmas. We, we did we did some Christmas episodes and now it's start of January. Um, and we thought, um, well, I, yeah. I, I came up with some suggestions because you, you had eaten too much food over Christmas. And you said you can't think of anything but food. Um, uh, yeah. A, cu- nothing a couple of sugar. Yeah. <laughs> Just sugar, yes. Uh, so we came up with a couple of ideas, and you chose one of the two options I gave you. And so, and you somehow turned it around and said, it's my idea, and it's my, <laughs> it's, it's, it's my, my intro. It's okay, so. I didn't have to do any research, so you said no research <laughs> for me to do, so. Uh, yes. So you we didn't we give did me a... enough enough notice. It was too much of a surprise. Like four weeks or however long it's been. <laughs> I, too, too short. I don't even know what the rules are anymore. Things keep changing. <laughs> you, you can't sit on a park bench, but you can sit on a park bench. It's weird. Even the government doesn't know their own <laughs> yeah. rules. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, so we we are um, we've not really spoken much about this topic in a while. We we did we did an episode on how to kind of like pass the time when when you're in this uh, lockdown initially. When we talked about like if if you got, if you so we want to talk about COVID, but we're going to talk about a few bits to go with COVID. But I think we we did an episode where we came up with uh, a different thing to do each day. To try and keep keep your mind active and try and keep your keep you doing something fun, mm. something unusual, not just watching TV, um, a, a bit of TV as well in there, but just kind of like doing keeping busy, keeping your mind kind of like fresh, playing vi- get board games and stuff, just kind of doing something out of the normal and having fun with either you know the online community if you're if you're home alone. Uh, with with your housemates, your family, your friends, however, so we've not we've not revisited this uh, COVID uh, since, and we've come up with so many other ideas and other things, but we've not really spoken about kind of like COVID in any other way. Um, hmm. For the, for those who are following no, COVID, not, um, I've been avoiding it. Yeah. Yes, well, we have, um, but I, I, I feel as though um, for those who follow COVID in in the UK. I think COVID's winning 3-0 now. Mm. This is our third lockdown. Uh, we've just entered. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you know, like with, with, with movies, the first one's exciting. You don't know what you're going to get. Everyone's sat at home. And you, you get to re- take time off your busy schedules and, and in, enjoy life for a little while, go, go out for walks or whatever it is. And it was, and it was quite nice. I liked the first one. Um, and, and then we got, we got the second yeah. lockdown. It was a good time for um, the first one. And then yeah, and then I, th- I feel like the second one started to get diminishing returns. I didn't I didn't enjoy the se- the sequel as much because um, because mm. you, you knew what was going to happen. Now um, you knew the things that were open, things that were closed. You know, people who didn't care and stuff. And but, but it, it was weird. But now now we're into the trilogy, and it's the third movie, the third lockdown movie. And I feel for for a lot of people, yeah. it's well, it, it's it the toughest one i think i think it's probably the weakest of the three yeah in movie terms <laughs> well we, we got to bring it back to pop culture somehow mm. so yeah so for in terms of like ending the trilogy this is, about like movies, so. this is like a hangover three it's it's the worst in the trilogy it's you know like, like a star wars film yeah. it's the worst in the trilogy yeah. um, and man three 
<laughs> you, you love Iron Man 3. You said it's the best <laughs> Christmas film in the last episode. Um, so so we thought let's let's talk about a little bit about this. Um, um, the lockdown a little bit, but more kind of like talk about kind of like mental health and kind of come with some ways to kind of help people cope. Um, hopefully, you know, okay. it, whichever country or whatever you're listening to around the world, you might be in or you're about to go into or just coming out of. Uh, various things so this this thing is you know pandemic is worldwide it's affecting millions of people billions of people so uh we just uh, let's come up with some things that can help people cope with that let's talk about some of the uh, point i guess issues and stuff that may have pe- people have experienced um, i've been speaking to a lot of people and people have been telling me stuff and it's fascinating to just okay. listen to things so hopefully we can kind of like shed some light maybe We'll see how it is, how serious or how fun we want to do the tone of it all. But yeah, <laughs> so, so okay. we'll see how it goes because you never, you never know. My young monkey can go off on one, and yeah, it could become a bit more fun, or it could yeah, just yeah. become really um, quite serious. We don't know. So, uh, do you want to talk about? Should we, should we break it down into? Should we break it down into mm-hmm. lockdown one, two, and three, and see how our feelings have changed? Should you start with that first, or how do you want to tackle okay. this? Okay, yeah, sure. We can do that. I'm up for that. I'm not sure what lockdown two is. Somewhere in the middle, somewhere. <laughs> What's yeah, in the middle? It all yeah. blows into one now. <laughs> <laughs> so who starts? So, then or what, so, or so picture it? this. It's 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 2020. It's come to March okay. in the in the UK. I don't I don't know about worldwide. In in the UK, March is quite a nice time of year. It's coming up to spring, so the weather's nice. True. And then yeah. the government says stay home that's our first kind of like thing so, so so everything has been told uh, pretty much shut down we're not sure people panic they buy toilet roll because that's an essential thing that we worldwide as well is weird because yeah. um, you'd see panic. consumers Bye. around the world buying toilet roll um we talked about a jug and water so, so this but, but it was um, it was weird but mm-hmm. uh, Actually, I, I quite enjoyed the first one. This was like I, I, I referring back to movie terms. I didn't know what to expect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I got a chance to kind of have, have so a we, bit of free time. Yeah. Yeah. Also, we had trailers for the first one. Oh, we we yeah. saw what was happening in, in China, China straight away. The first Italy. sort of scenes of what was going on. And then we saw Italy, what Italy were doing. And then it came here and the rest of the world in sort of a our past way compared to those two um so it wasn't it wasn't as bad as the way they were doing things because they were obviously doing things properly we got a bit of a yes, glimpse I... into what was coming then and and, it, and a bit quite exciting <laughs> it was it felt like you know um, it's like <laughs> yeah it's it feels like this movie had been released in um china japan that part of asia and it was just it was like everyone's watching it this is the movie to watch and, you know, it's slowly making its way to the yeah. country, but we didn't get it for a while, or we had it, the movie, but they didn't play it in the <laughs> cinemas. <laughs> it was like they were holding on to it because we would get a lot of information, but for whatever reason, um, felt like the government weren't acting yeah. on things and things were slowly, it really took its time. Yeah. It felt like it's, 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 like we, it's a movie uh, that, you know, like, like we, were, back, we were watching it on. Yeah. You've got an idea? I was going to say it was a bit like we were watching it on streaming streaming sites, illegal downloads, um, and there was nothing officially known about it. It, was, it wasn't yes. official yet. <laughs> I was going to use the metaphor of using a 56K modem. You know, like we're trying to download this movie. This is like this incredible movie, but they've shot it in 4K, but we've got the worst, tra- oh, <laughs> worst no. way of downloading it. And remember you had the dial tone and go, ee, and then you get you onto the internet and then you slow. It just felt like it was taking yeah. ages for us to get this movie, like this, this thing that we all wanted. <laughs> True. And people were watching the movie in, in a low, low resolution thinking, this isn't even real. I'm not going to do nothing. I'm not going to change. No, it doesn't affect me. <laughs> Um, and then, yeah, so then, then our country went into what they call the first, the first national lockdown. Um, at that point, um, there was a guy, um, 
who was who was quite big, quite famous in the UK, and he started doing PE with Joe Wick. So he'd be on the TV, he'd be on his oh, YouTube, yeah. um, and he broke streaming records and stuff. And he started getting the nation, at least the world, because it's streaming, you can watch it wherever, yeah. and just getting kids to do or anyone half an hour of physical exercise, and purposefully picked a smallish room in his house. So people can see you don't need a massive house, no equipment, just exercise. And, you know, people, it got people going, got people moving. And we always thought the end is near. So yes. This was, you know, the first movie, we were promised that get <laughs> through this. There's the promised land, you know. Well, that it, was, it was going to a massive end, right? Yeah. This, I mean, there was always this idea that it was only going to be like a few weeks in, in people's minds, but I always had the idea it's definitely going to be about three months. So I kind of knew it was going to be a bit longer. But that was optimistic. Definitely... But what I, what, I, what I found different, especially about the first one, was that everyone was energised to get through it because they, they'd just been pushed straight into it. And yeah. as you say, there were people just, just trying to keep fit, ready for the end of it so that nothing would change. They'd just be fit but at the end of it still. They go on with their normal lives. Um, I know I was doing um, daily jogging indoors. Um, on the wee fit. I mean, eventually, my uh, housemate uh, got in on it as well, encouraged her to do it as well. Brilliant, uh, see? So, so, we all, so we're all doing that. And plus there was this, um, it's, it's all sort of uh, common, like Zoom, Zoom calls and stuff. It's like common um, knowledge, sort of part, of part of the way of life now. But at that time, it was new. Everyone was trying to get in on the net just to keep everyone encouraged and and psychologically keep them yeah mentally healthy and stuff as well. So it was like yes, we're going to get through this. We're going to do the best we can, and that's I think is different to the the sequels, which we'll, we'll get to obviously. Yes, I think um, yeah because people are still optimistic. I think one of the, one of the big things that came out of um, the first lockdown was not just. Um, UK affected we've seen other like you said we've seen other countries um, you've seen the other end of it you see people in Italy yeah. who are in their house singing um, That's one, true. Of the, one of the things that um, an incredible streaming office service offered was free porn hub as well so we were all like <laughs> energized and we were like yes this is amazing yes. look we've got access got to everything <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was one-sided uh, but it's a good <laughs> So they so they offered free um, Shredder, um, the horror streaming uh, service, also offered like a free month subscription. There was just a lot of things I felt like for the first one, shops were still open, essential shops. Um, mm-hmm. There were still things to do, but not everyone had fully realized what to do, but people were able to take some time off and kind of like enjoy a bit of time as well that they never would yeah. have had. Um, so I, th- I think coming to the end of the movie and we're getting, yes. you know, you, you're coming to the end, you're thinking, um, l- like in Lord of the Rings, there's that big um, battle. Um, obviously, um, we, we fought the Balrog. We've made it to Ministerus. Now we're coming to the bit where the fellowship's about to break. And this is what it felt okay. like in the, the UK, where <laughs> Samwise, Ganji and Frodo were going to go one way. Pippin had been kidnapped with Mary and they were going a different way and Aragon and Legolas <laughs> were left and I felt like this is the part where the UK broke into little subsections and all of a sudden mm-hmm. other parts of our country were forced to stay in the same <laughs> lockdowns and <laughs> so just yeah. the, using the Lord of the Rings metaphor it felt like some people were allowed to go off on their own journeys some people were allowed yeah. to do certain things and others weren't. And others were locked into Mordor. Surrounded, <laughs> surrounded by know. orcs. Yes. Mordor, that, that sounds a bit like yeah, Middle Earth as well. Yeah, that's about the right area. The Midlands in the country, yes. So yeah, um, yeah. so I think that's when I think people started, I, I felt people were starting to itch. And I think that's kind of like, you've had this thing, everyone went through it. But now it's almost like, even though the country, you see on news, you see everywhere, people are going back to normal. You, Mm. or these small pockets of the country, are forced not to. And I can feel the frustration 
in a lot of those areas because you you can tell yeah. it, it it felt like not not by any fault of anyone's but it just felt like those areas had to kind of like do whatever they needed to do to to be with the rest of us but if you're in that area i, I imagine it must have been even more frustrating and that's when it starts to put a strain on kind of like your mental health you melt a bean and you want to be mm. doing exercises and stuff going out as much because you're now frustrated yeah as someone from the outside of those areas um i felt it was unfair for those areas as well i don't think there's any reason why they should be in those in those situations and i felt like it might have been political as well like why did they cho- choose these particular areas um you know, there's, there's, like why, why pick leicester and bradford I'm just saying, think about it. <laughs> if, you, if you know what the demo, demographics are like, then then what are the government really at, up to? You know, are they trying to just break break the businesses in certain areas more than others? But then, as we're coming later on, they're just trying to destroy all businesses. It looks like because everything's going everything's going back to lockdown. Yeah. I, guess, so. I, I we'll think that's to... when you kind of that's when uh, people's frustration. So you you watch the news and you'll see. Uh, people in the tubes crammed in going to central London or on the bus whatever it is so if you're in those areas you're like but why am I why are we stuck at home and so you those people then started to play in parks or whatever it is but it, it depends what news outlet you're listening to because there is varied <laughs> about what people were doing but it, they always put a bad spin on it they'll be like ah oh, they're all out yeah. doing this they're all mingling still that could be okay. a small percentage. That's not the mass, but um, yeah, so yeah, so yeah. so it must be frustrating. And and I think initially having the kids at home for a little while must have been really good for the parents, the families, all you know, to be together. But then because you've mm. got to go to work and you've got your kids at home, yeah, and you got to, you got your work life balance in the same building, in your same homes, yeah. big or small. I imagine as oh. As the first lockdown was coming to an end, you must have been excited to see the end go. But now, this is completely different. And at that point, being home with your kids or your family must have been really fun. It must have been like, we can do these things. We can bake. You see loads of YouTube stuff. People are baking, yeah, making stuff together. The exciting times and, yeah, the fun times with family, hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. I, there's, there's a whole heap of other things that's happened uh, to, to families and stuff but it's so it seemed like it's it's also a bit more fun uh, parents were able to teach kids how to cook or whatever it is at home mm. but obviously you still have to go to work so now you're stuck in your house became a home yeah. a school a work environment yeah. and and no house yeah. very few houses are built for that sort of layout that sort of no. thing. so as time goes yeah. on, it must have, it was wearing down on people, and people were just feeling more and more claustrophobic. So initially, he had that one hour of playtime outside, and that then when like he lifted the, <laughs> it does, doesn't it? I don't like and the then, word and then, phobic. <laughs> and then eventually, he he let us play out for longer than one hour, and he said, "Good, you can go out for as long as you want, but just don't mingle with other households." And you'll see more people biking in this country than ever before. I felt. That's good. That's a good thing. Something good to come out of it. Yeah, Halfords were saying, you know, more and more people are buying bikes than they ever did. So uh, so that was good. So the, it, it all, all helps with their kind of like well-being. Being stuck at home, being claustrophobic, one of the best ways to do that is just go out for a little while. Go for a walk, jog, go for a bike ride. A family actually, thing or like, an individual thing. I actually felt like at that time... Um, it actually boosted exercise a lot because as soon as people were told they're allowed to go outside for their yes. daily exercise, people that would never have exercised before, never have even left their house before, oh, yes. all jumped on it and are like, yeah, I'm going outside because I can. <laughs> yes, that's this is what I mean. Like the first movie was incredible. We had a lot more healthier Breaking people in. roaming around the streets. Um, our, our country... Because things were shut down, beaches and stuff were getting cleaner. We may have been able to see the water. Who knows? Yeah, <laughs> but, but then, as we got into, 
<laughs> yeah, as we, I guess, if <clears throat> as we got further into the year, we got put into another lockdown. Um, <clears throat> again, on to the second, uh, movie. second movie in the trilogy. I feel like it was shorter. We knew what we were going to get. It felt like it was the same beats. So we knew essential shops, uh, but then other shops started opening. I think I mentioned this previously. This um, shop owner came up with a good way of doing click and collect, which was just put his telephone oh, yeah. number on a on a table outside, and then you phone him up and say what you want, and he just <laughs> roam around his shop. Okay. Um, it was it's brilliant. It was brilliant. Um, you know, business owners started to adapt to the new way. Retail has not it's not going to survive the way it used to. I think we in this time we talked about um bill and ted that finally mm. came to cinemas as well yeah. and you talked about the cinema cinemas, experience how that changed moment. yeah just before the second lockdown i guess yes and then around that then time, I, th- yeah. I feel by the second lockdown that's when kind of like things were because you still got your you still got your home office you've got your house you've got your kids now i feel people were kind of like put the tv on for the kids while they're at home i'll go work yeah. and the thing. So, so things have changed um pe- people were now i think bored of the lockdown people were frustrated I, I, you get the feeling that now is the kind of time that there's a strain in a lot of more people's relationships as well i mm. imagine it must be more frustrating and people okay. just became yeah. fat yeah. <laughs> and, and no more we we didn't have any more free offers as well like we didn't get any free months of this or that no, no streaming services no, nobody was up. offering anything <laughs> no and so <laughs> so yes our well-being is not being looked after at all um so it was, yeah. and then now we're into the end of the trilogy and this i think it it, it, it was going to come at some point it felt again came at the wrong yeah, time the, i mean the sequel wasn't really the sequel wasn't exactly a full sequel either. It was more like a no, a it was short half. Time. More like a, a it's more like an Ant Man b- before the Avengers two, or something like that. <laughs> that doesn't quite add up, but yeah. I think so. But it, it it was yeah. It it felt like it was again knee jerk reaction to where um, certain cases in certain areas were going higher up again. And then, you know, after that, we've got mm. this whole tiering system and all sorts of other things that spun off of there. Tiers one, two, three, <laughs> then you had four, and then you put everybody on five. It, it, it's just, it got, <laughs> the, the lore of the movie just got really complex. So, you know, when it we is. were just following our uh, hobbits, our and, elf, and of course, this is our the dwarf. Point where, <laughs> yeah, and this is the point where, where uh, my area of the country that I know more of, um, actually went, managed to excel beyond the Mid- Midlands. The Southeast managed to yes. excel beyond the Midlands in terms of tears for, sh- for a change. So how did that feel as a, as a, um, as a Midland as an, area as someone, expert? So someone who, who <laughs> lives on the outside, what's, what's, what was interesting is how it felt, um, I guess, you know, when speaking to people who are kind of like near up North and, um, Midlands and stuff it felt like especially the north felt like they were being like Liverpool Manchester were being signaled out and you know they felt the cases there weren't as high as like London for example but London didn't have the same restrictions I felt Mm. that's where the government really kind of let down the people where if we just put the same rules in place for everyone uh, because what you forget is as soon as they made the announcement for um for the third movie which which we all knew was mm. coming out at some point because the first two were so successful that um, as soon as that was <laughs> going to happen, and people started moving around the country. So this new mutant virus or whatever it is, it's going to spread. We never, I think what, one of the biggest problems was never shutting down the borders properly and yeah. you know having tests available for anyone who comes off and comes into the country or... Uh, p- yeah, people like New Zealand, like who's, the PM is, yeah, the the PM in New Zealand is an exceptional job. You know, they've they fought it so well here. We've had so many. I think they forget there's so many avenues to, into the country, and once you're in, mm-hmm. there is no way you could stop people. So once 
the announcement happened for Christmas, um, I remember looking at the train line times, uh, train tickets from London mm -hmm. to the north, various, yeah. doesn't matter what cities, were just selling out so quickly. People were looking to leave. Wow. And it's stuff like that. It's the just price. the case. I'm, I'm sure they did. They should, have, they should have used capitalism. Just you know, put the price ten <laughs> times higher, and then I guess that would probably just kill the poor people like ourselves. So yeah, don't do that anyway. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's, it's it's difficult as it is. Yeah. So 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 now you know in movie number three, um, he he because in between it's it's almost like if J.R. Tolkien wrote three books, uh, Peter Jackson was putting them into the movies after number two after helms deep we all come out we're like yes chest pumping we're all excited then you know jr tolkien says peter jackson before you show everyone your third movie let me write some of this new lore about middle earth and uh -huh. let me introduce <laughs> let me introduce a new tier of enemies that have yeah. this sort of class this and and, he's, and he got confusing i'm sure people didn't understand Every so often, you'll have news updates saying, "This is moved here, and these are your new restrictions. This is <laughs> this is yeah. what you can and can't do now." I mean, this whole week has been has been, oh, this per this person has been fined for this ha for them doing this, but they didn't know this was part of the rules. And then Boris on a bike saying, "Actually, no, that isn't part of the rules now, but it is." Um, yes, and, and you, you can be arrested, but you should use your own judgment. So, <laughs> so unclear. Where does that lead? It's 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 mind-boggling how how much law has been just hap, hap slash hap dashedly thrown into the mix without any sort of idea of where it's going to go in the story and uh, how it's going to work towards the plot. <laughs> yeah. So this is this is why this third movie is an absolute mess because. I was reading this thing where these two ladies, they got in their car, they drove to wherever this park is, mm. uh, four or five miles away from their house, but it, maybe it's the nearest park, who knows, and they got fined £200, while well, Boris did a 10-mile bike ride, uh, but he went yeah. wherever, So it, and they said that, I think the question was, what happens if we sit on a bench? So if you're going for a walk or a run in the mm. park, yeah, feel exactly. a bit tired, if you sit down, what are the rules? Because it's so unclear as to what you can or can't do this time around. And no one really knows yeah. the answer. Well, the thing is, it should be it should be common sense. And the whole thing should really be common sense. And the fact that you're going out and getting exercise should be a time for relieving stress and, and getting that exercise and endorphin rush and things that you need to keep yourself mentally healthy. And yeah. how can you do that if you're scared of what's going to happen if you leave the house because because it's not being governed correctly or clearly? So you don't know if you go jog down the street and the police are allowed to come up and inquire of what you're doing and decide on their own at a flip of a coin what, what whether they think they should find you or not. How is that healthy to anyone to be able to just go out and and get the relief they need? Exactly. It's it's so difficult. It, it's this time around. It just feels like, um, especially for the, the the people who are now, I think we're we're, we're committed to the movies. <laughs> They're here. Mm. We can't really do nothing. But uh, unfortunately, there's a set of rules and a set of like almost like a pamphlet of information you need to read before you can sit and watch this movie. That's what it feels like. <laughs> but but no one really knows what those rules fully are. And, no, and I don't like blame ten pamphlets. Ten pamphlets <laughs> yes. in the foyer, they're all different and and some of them aren't <laughs> so, even relevant, but you're just you're just picking through them, trying to figure out what's happening in this movie. <laughs> you gotta read it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so so that's that's the current UK uh, standpoint and where we are. So I thought yeah. let's talk about some things to kind of like relieve kind of a lot of the mental um, health issues yeah. that people will be feeling that one of the biggest ones is claustrophobia. I feel yeah. that a lot of people will be stuck at home. Okay. They'll be, <clears throat> yeah. depending on how, how big or how you live, you'll have a, if you're working there, is you'll have a desk, which might be in your bedroom. So, you know, you sleep in your bedroom, you work in your bedroom, yeah. you'll have lunch that, in your that's bedroom. That's not healthy in the first place, is it? Have, no. Working so, in the same place to sleep is never recommended, really. 
but it's what people have to do at the moment. Yes, because your home, when you originally would have bought it or rented or wherever you live, was never built for you to be. Some people's homes will be because, you know, they, they, they've been working from home for years and they're OK. But, but the mass, the mass, the vast majority of us will have a home which isn't fit for a huge office space or any office space so you're either mm. most probably putting it in your bedroom because you're living with parents or you're living in someone else's house um, and then you wake up at whatever o'clock you go get changed and then you come back into your bedroom you'll do your hours of work you'll then go downstairs yeah. maybe get a sandwich bring it back to your desk because mm. most people are working lunches <laughs> and then yeah. they'll fit finally finish and then you might leave your bedroom so so that's 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 obviously a massive um, issue that a lot of people are going to be facing. And that so, time in the same room. So first advice yeah. is is break up that day, I guess, and yes, and get out of that room, and commit to maybe talking to other people in your house rather than staying in that run room, for, at least for a portion of your day. Yes. Um, so for a lot of people, you're absolutely right. You come out of the room. So let's let's think of easy things that we can kind of like suggest to people to do. So just like you said, so come out of your room. That's nice and easy. Uh, if you have a lunch break, if it's possible, mm. plan your lunch. So in in the morning, maybe wake up a little bit earlier or whatever. But maybe plan your lunch break so you can leave your house for your yeah. go for a walk because then you split up your day as well. Because you know your working day could be from nine to five, eight till four, whatever it is. 12 o'clock or one o'clock whenever your lunch break is maybe do a half an hour walk just outside your house mm -hmm. um, you, your head will feel a lot more clearer i think because you're out of your house you're out of your room get some fresh air even if it's cold and wet you'll feel better i think mm. uh, it'd be nice if you could just eat while you're out but that's uh <laughs> according to the news that's a, that's a dangerous thing to do but you're probably not re realistic you could eat your sandwich sitting down outside during your walk but it depends on what area you're in and what your police are like I guess I would advise against any of that because I don't know what the we rules would, are we would because I haven't read your yeah, pamphlet officially officially <laughs> I would advise I would, would advise you uh, be careful about it that's all like uh, yeah but you know hopefully those cases that we're seeing on the on the news are just special cases i think yeah like they always break up the like the absolute worst um uh examples so hopefully you can go out your house and in a more relaxed way than it than it feels like at the moment and just, uh, yeah i think also just getting out of wherever you are and if you just walk down the road now you, you can listen to music music's always great uh, listen to us whatever you want to do or just if you listen to the sounds if you listen to like birds cheeping uh, someone's walking the dog and mm. the dog's barking just other sounds and seeing things instead of your tv or your computer screen i think that that would help a lot as well for people who are feeling i'm living in my bedroom now i have to work <laughs> in my bedroom i have to eat in my bedroom and this is a scenario for there must be so many people going through that so uh, best piece of advice like you said take yeah. take little breaks little and often and for lunch if you don't get a full hour and you can't commit to just half an hour 20 minutes just just get out there for a little little walk nothing too quick nothing like not a sprint you you can work up yeah. to zero to 5k you know you can do all of those cool things as well but just initially it's just getting out of this rut of staying in the same place just just go out for a little walk get some fresh air yeah I've actually just um, starting to take up the indoor jogging again as well. So I, I jog to um, YouTube videos of, of other people's jogs. Um, uh, I, I, but again, like I was doing that in the first lockdown, but then I kind of got out of it. I, I stopped being enthused, enthused for it. Um, and it's just been the fact that the days are starting to get a bit brighter and longer now. And it's and yes. I noticed that. And that's helped me want to exercise a bit more. Um, and for that, I find I like to go. I like to go to places like New York, uh, San Francisco, things like that, because that's what interests me. <laughs> Listen it means to I've some got... GTA soundtrack in the background. Yeah, yeah, sometimes, yeah. Um, 
Yeah. And uh, my housemate uh, likes to do uh, sort of just um, walks uh, and runs through like uh, woodlands or jungles or all, sort, all sorts of nature places, which is OK. But um, that's that's one way to feel like you're going further away from your home than you are, um, I guess. Uh, but I personally like to have things to look at and aim at. Like I like yeah. to see the Golden Gate Bridge and go, oh, I'm jogging towards that. And oh, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to get back to things like that as well. But they're not yeah. pixels. I mean, every, every one of these advices can, can start to get depressing as well, though, because it's, it is hard. It is. I mean, there's there's things online where um, I was reading this thing was, I think it's climb Mount Everest. So every, every day you walk, whatever number of steps, run, cycle, whatever it is, and all of that adds towards your trek. So whatever the, the distance is to, to the peak and yeah. back, stuff like that. So that there are a lot of challenges and a lot of things out there that people can access. And so the walking might seem boring, but actually when you put those steps and you put that like your jog towards something, a goal, that might keep you interested mm. to come back the next day and the next day. And therefore, one of the days, one of the mornings, you might wake up early go for a walk first thing i see a lot of people where where, where i live um walking at about five o'clock or six o'clock i imagine that's after they've finished work just to mm. get out of kind of like their home and the home office space and it just be either a person by themselves a couple by themselves a couple and some kids and stuff so that people are doing this and it's going to help getting out of the home and just doing something so simple mm. you don't have to run around you know not yet. You can work up talk, to that. Talk about goal setting. That's something that comes up for dealing with depression as well, which you might not think you're uh, experiencing depression, but you, it's hard to really know. It's, depression isn't a feeling. There's, well, there's the feeling and then there's the condition, mm. which is something you always need to separate. So you have to remember depression. when you've got depression or you're starting to experience depression, you won't. It's, it's not about the feeling. It's more about the habits that are forming and how you're how you're going to be. Um, sort of self perceiving yourself and things like that um, but the, one of the things that comes up for depression is goal setting sort of setting small goals achievable goals so you get that sort of progress feeling of progress um, but what I found in the in the later lockdowns is that that's it's harder to to get on with that now like it's it's harder to be enthused and motivated even for the things that should be helping um, and I think the advice now is for that situation is actually um, don't put too much pressure on yourself to be to be having to achieve these things that, because things are getting harder all the time. Yes. And you know, it's just if you're starting to feel anxious, which is the other side of depression in some ways, it's like the opposite side of it. Um, just start to maybe think about put, taking the pressure off yourself and think I don't you know you don't have to do this just because everyone else is doing it you don't have to do this thing just because you were committed to it last year um, in trying to be at exercise and actually you know get back to what you want to do when you're ready and don't feel like you're under that constant pressure to do something better and do something right now because things are stretching on and yeah you just need to give yourself a bit of space to breathe and I know I have needed to do that. Um, with, you know, whether I've been successful or not on that is another matter. But it's it's a step towards yes. what we what we can do to feel better. Oh, definitely. I, th I think everything you said is is key for so many people here. That where you know lockdown one, it seemed like you could you could run to the moon. <laughs> by, by lockdown yeah. three, I can't even. You know, I can't leave my room now because I'm kind of like, it's my home office, this is my bed. This is, but yeah, just having, and the thing is, there are um, there are lots of things online where they'll say, you know, do zero to 5K or 10K, um, do, do the press up mm. challenge, do the, uh, I don't know, the planking challenge. We're not saying do do the most difficult, do something simple, just a simple change in your life. Hopefully with all, all the ideas we come up with, just it's just a little thing. And, and then it's up to you to how big that snowballs. And your success is different to someone else's. So, you know, you go for a walk for 20 minutes every two days is your success. And that's a huge success. It's a big win. You don't have to be the one hour a day and we go mm. for a run. That That's someone else's success. Yeah. And, and so it's not quantifiable. We can't say this person's doing a better job or that person's, you know, we're all doing incredible jobs, whatever it is. 
So even, you know, five, 10, 20 minutes, half an hour, whatever it is, that's a big, that's big, 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 big win. You're amazing, whoever you are. You're amazing and you're doing very well. Exactly. So it's all big, big wins. You don't realize like how, how a little change will make such a big difference in, in kind of like in, in your life. So a, just a little thing. And then the, the worst thing is when you start to sit there and look at what someone else has achieved and what they've done. Mm. It, it, you should never do that because what, where you've got to and how you've achieved that is incredible because circumstances are different for everyone. So we can't look and at complex, someone. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Mind, so complex. Exactly. So never, never get bogged down with someone else. Just concentrate on what you're doing. And I think like the, the, the scenario that we're talking about um, is people who are working and living at home and working from home and they're not, they're not I able think, to leave. Yeah. So I imagine I there's a lot of people a, like this. It applies to a lot of people. I think there's, I mean, I'm, I'm not exactly in that situation at all. So, and it applies to me as well. So I mean, my, my situation was that the first lockdown, um, I was being furloughed off of work and it was great because my, my work was stressful. Um, my, my boss wasn't, wasn't very conducive. So I was just like, yes. Yes. Um, but then by the end of the first lockdown, I didn't have a job anymore, which was in one way, yes, I don't have to deal with that boss anymore. But in another way, it means that I'm no longer got that sort of security behind me. Yeah. That means that I can just enjoy my time, um, which which is uh, makes it more stressful, I guess. And a lot of people are in the same scenario. There's the in in the UK, the furlough scheme has been. Uh, I think it ends in May, but since then I know so many people, yep. so many people in your scenario where they've been furloughed, and while they've been furloughed, they've just been made redundant. I know so, um, I've known yeah. people who've had to make teams furloughed, and and then they've had the conversation the following week with the same team members individually to hand hand them their redundancy, and they've wow, now yeah. taken on additional work from their team which they have to do or they won't have a job and they're working nearly double the hours that they would have done just trying to but but then you know they're thinking at least I've got a job and it's this terrible scenario where you're thinking you know I gotta work really hard now which is a case for a lot mm-hmm. of people where they're thinking if otherwise I won't have a job because you know the company's just made me do all this and yeah all the stresses of, of that in general yeah yeah, and those people working those ridiculous hours are doing them in the same rooms as they're living. So it's not like you have a commute where you can kind of get your head out of it or anything else. So these little changes, hopefully, we can kind of like help help kind of clear your mind a little bit and try and do something else. It's kind of like hopefully, mm-hmm. hopefully we can come up with some more suggestions as well. Um, so so that one is a nice easy one. What you said, just come out of your room, go do something, a little yes. change, not massive. Um, can you think of, uh, do you want to give another suggestion or anything else you think can um, help people? Well, that's the thing. I mean, you said I didn't have to research, so I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, otherwise, I'd be a bit more prepared. Um, but, I mean, we've, we've had all the things before, you know, um, organise. Uh, as much as I hate the, the fact that Zoom calls is like a buzzword yes. now, I hate that term. But the fact is, if you can, if you, if you, if you don't have any other opportunity to talk to anyone else, or, or you just need this opportunity to talk to people outside of your bubble or outside of your household. Um, you know, get involved in some groups or something that where you can have some Zoom calls or with friends um, that you know that you can't actually get to see. Uh, I know it's kind of like the the steam has run out on that because we were really excited about doing that yeah. in the fir- first lockdown, first movie. Um, but in this, in the third movie, third movie, yeah, that you know, that's still an option to, um, if you if you can be bothered to organise it. I mean, it's just the case of someone has to be organising it, and like, yes. the enthusiasm has gone down to organise it. So just maybe just, um, yeah, maybe do that. Find a way to have a face to face call if if at all possible. I mean, I know not everyone will have the technology to do that, so. No, um, so, so I, th- I think that's key. So there, um, so I've, I've done loads of Zoom sessions, be playing poker online, be uh, quizzes. Um, nice. We did charades. Um, I did name that the games nights and stuff, all sorts of things. Um, so it's it's yes, you're right. Someone needs to organise something. So one of the easiest ways that um, I 
you know, I did, I did a, hosted a quiz, but it means you got to do all the work, and then you sit there at some time, and you're like, yeah. oh, I've got to do all these questions. Um, Stressful game. Yeah. One <laughs> easy way around it was something that someone else mentioned to me was you, you have you have your people, you have a quiz master, but they then tell everyone to um, text, write, you know, message me your questions. Okay, so everyone has their own topics, okay. and they, they send those questions to the quiz master. So one of the questions would would be you know topic X. But you would tell everyone who that who that's from. Um, so what they do is then at the end, once you've answered those three, four questions, whatever it is, keep it quite short. They then have to guess who gave those questions to the quiz master. So you open it up to a bit more okay. fun. It's a bit more interactive. So we're trying to guess. And so, that's you know, cool. the quiz master would shout like, so who do you think it is? And, and you know, you'd shout, it, we think it's this person, we think it's that person. And it's just, it's a bit more fun. And the person who's asked the question is kind of ducking their head a little bit, trying to trying to throw you off. Um, so it's 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 another added fun. It doesn't mean you're the only one having to do, organize it, or, you know, you can, you can spread that yeah. load to everyone else to do. Uh, I can imagine you could also just say, everyone bring one round of 10 questions each. And yeah, do, I think they can ten questions is a lot, though. Them. I know, but that's well, that's a five lot. Questions so, five. five, yeah, <laughs> five's about right. Um, so we, I've I've joined ones where it's you know because if there's eight of you and there's five questions, you know, five times eight, so that, that becomes quite a lot of questions. You multiply that by ten, that's eighty questions now. Okay, so yeah. it it depends how long it's a Zoom long. session you're going to have. Yeah, if it, it will feel that way, the first ten might not do, but by the time you get to sixty okay. and seventy, you feel like. Oh, is this ever going to end? Yeah. So mm-hmm. you want to keep it fun, keep it quite short. Um, the the other Under thing 50, that, then. <laughs> yeah, it, it it just varied depending on the day. Because some days you'll be sat at home going, you know what, I could do a hundred questions. Some <laughs> days you just don't feel like a hundred questions. Uh, so mm-hmm. big, big or small, however you guys want it. One one of the other g- cool things is hand out prizes so over Christmas. Um, I was on this Christmas one where. Um, uh, the, the person who's hosting they were like oh okay so i'm going to get you to do this thing and then we'll all give you a rating out of five and then you'll we'll tally them up and person will win a prize or something um and it's just chocolate bars but it was just mm. it was just fun to get everyone on the zoom sessions to do to do something yeah. a bit more fun um, and that's to look easy forward to as well and something you can mess around with the numbers and see oh who's winning and all that sort of thing yeah it's like a it's just it's it's a fun little so yeah there's, so you're right about the zoom sessions if you can if you can still do them or, or you know whatever technology you use we're not sponsored by zoom mm. Hope, hopefully one day <laughs> um whatever technology you can do um, it, you can do some th- or you can piggyback off others because there are just hundreds of people doing things constantly online where mm. you could just you might meet like-minded people so if you've got an interest in something someone will be hosting something to do with that topic or that idea yeah. and you'll be able to jump onto that and actually meet people who enjoy the same things as you and yeah. then and that could spin up friendships and stuff that weren't there before that's yeah i mean that, that kind of ties into something that isn't a, really another idea but it's similar um, and that's just the fact that I've I've been involved in uh, Facebook groups for a hobby of mine and met a lot of people through that, which has been great. And uh, we, we occasionally, uh, we, someone in the group organizes um, Zoom calls every, it was maybe every three months, but I think it's a little bit more um, frequent now because of, so that people can talk to people. And yeah, there's a, we've just got a whole little community there that people can, can talk to. Um, so whereas whereas I might not have any opportunity to Zoom, um, Zoom call or whatever method you're using, um, you know that that's given me a, a an, an extra sort of friend group, which is nice. Yeah. Um, and the the other thing is that through those groups, someone's running a tournament um, of it's a it's a book group, so it's a, a tournament between the, the favourite books. And you're I think you're in that group. I invited you, so you've probably seen a little bit of that happening. Um, but it's just something like that that someone has run for us, which is really nice. Um, I'm not saying you should run that um, uh, unless you're prepared for the commitment it takes. But the fact that someone else has committed to sort of running something like that and it's going on every day just gives something to look forward to and something to get up for um, for other people to sort of see what's happening and see how the tournament is going and how it's going to change each day. 
Um, yeah. I think, like, from that, like you said, you've got, like, you, it, you'll you slowly build a new friend circle that you didn't have previously who will also have interest in the same thing as you do, also going through the, exactly the same, because they may be UK-based, they may be foreign-based, and they they are still doing lockdowns or coming out lockdowns, so they're still, they're, we've all been through this pandemic together, so they'll still have their mm. own stories to share with you. You'll have your story. You've got a person to speak to off of that as well, which would be incredible for a lot of people who don't have an outlet just to kind of be able to start that ball rolling. And what you don't realize is those communities, whatever it is you're interested in, uh, they're all welcoming. It's there's Mm. no there's no you don't need to be scared to go on a session with people who enjoy Harry Potter, for example, or Lord of the Rings, mm. or you know James Bond movies, whatever, whatever your whatever your poison is, it's it's all going to be people who enjoy it. So they're all going to be welcoming to new people coming in and joining, bringing new perspectives in, or playing whatever games and stuff they're doing. So it's always good to mm. kind of just join that, do it a few times. You you'll you'll meet people that you never would have met any other way. Yeah, I mean especially with sort of niche interests like mine you like you wouldn't have met those people in your local community um there's just not enough people to to warrant it i guess in nearby but once you've got the entire country are uh, focused on say facebook or whatever network um yeah you're much more likely to get a, a decent number group of people together when it so yeah yeah, and before you know it, you know you'll have a you'll have a, a new set of friends that you can obviously buzz, you, you know, have ideas and have fun with in a different way. Like one of the things that we, we do a lot is like when you play online gaming as well. Like if there's a community of people there, and granted it varies in terms of like how they are, but if you pick the right game, yeah. you can come up with some really yeah. good co-op players who are there to help and to play with you and to you know, and and even that will grow into little friendships and spin off things. Yeah. So, so you don't realize how you know if if you if you enjoy, we always talk back to the, your favorite game of all time, Bloodborne. How you have this <laughs> online, yeah. you have this ability to uh, ring a bell and go into people's wells or help people, vice versa. Uh, but yeah, in doing so, <laughs> in doing so, you could speak to them. And as you're talking about the game that you're both playing you know little, little things can grow from there it doesn't have to always be call of duty or the, these games which pit you up against someone else you can play a different type of co-op game where they're helping each other yeah i mean I've, i'm a fan of co-op i'm not a fan of competitive play and sort of trolling each other and stuff like that that's that's something you get in some games but i definitely prefer some collaborative games um and yeah that was going to be my other suggestion not really um sure on the exact suggestion of it but it's quite a topical thing that um that i've, I've seen come out of these lockdowns is that um video games in general yes are sort of get are getting a, a boost of popularity and also a boost in recognition for dealing with mental health issues so a lot of, you know it's been shown that the playing video games has has helped people's mental health it's helped with them you know distractions from the real world i guess as well but maybe there must be other reasons as well such as um you know just having something else to do uh, something to i guess it comes down to goals as well um if you, those sort of miniature goals in life that help you progress and stave off depression can come naturally by playing video games probably as well because you've always got something you're aiming for and always something you're trying to do sometimes you don't do it you get frustrated and you close down the game and never play it again maybe that's just me uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah uh, video games for for positivity as well and yeah and i think you're right playing online is a, is a big part of that as well definitely if, if it gives you another outlet where you get to connect with people even if you're just even if the only connection is them shooting you and you shooting them back and, and, and in that sort of Fortnite or Call of Duty sort of way, at least it's some connection in some way, some sort of um, interaction with the outside world. It's got to be better than nothing. Yeah, I think um, you're right. About, um, we played video games for so many years of our lifetimes. Uh, a lot yeah. of the games used to play at home 
and you know stuff like GoldenEye when they split screen other games. So people used to come around to your house and you play them. Um, with the online gaming community and the way it works now, is you can play anyone anywhere in the world at any time. Um, mm. I've I've set up sessions with people on my PlayStation um, friends list where we play FIFA, for example, because because I because mm. because I like FIFA. Um, <laughs> but you 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 do it, so it's it's just a bit of banter, it's a bit of fun, but it's just easy. It's it's an easy game, but. You can. You, it's better, I find, like some like Borderlands, where you, you've got one goal, but you're both playing together, or four of you can play yeah. together. Yeah. Um, and in Borderlands, you can always jump into other people's co-ops. And if you've got your handset and stuff on there, uh, you, you'll be talking to people. You might help them through a mission. Uh, you, yeah, you know, video games, that. like you said, are goal-oriented, and you know, kind of getting out of this the rut that a lot of people are. It's, Video game sets little goals, and some of them do. Some of them are massive goals, but you know, little little yeah. things. Like get to this waypoint, collect item X, bring it back, yeah. to, and get a reward, stuff like that. I so find, they tend. I find I, I find I set my own goals as well in video games, which which means that you can set small goals, daily goals. Yeah, so many headshots, that sort of thing. But it's 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 little things. I think what, what mo- mobile gaming as well is huge. Like there's there's five apps last year that grossed over a billion pound dollars. Five apps mm. that grossed over a billion in terms of sales. So even just playing Candy Crush for a little while might take your mind off things. It's it's incredible how video games are so addictive, but also gets you out of thinking about the norm, and you can meet people as well. Mm. So you got any yeah. other suggestions on how <laughs> how else? Um, not really. I mean, the so key thing is more. not yeah, yeah, not putting pressure on yourself um, and, and getting two things in your own time. But these are some of the ideas, yeah. And I think before we had sort of creative ideas as well, like yes. learning guitar, maybe writing songs, maybe uh, taking up art. Um, maybe honing your art skills if you've already taken up art, um, things like that. Yes, Is that one definitely. of your ideas? Um, so all, all the ideas, we'll, we'll link the old co- um, COVID episode down, but what, one of the things that um, that will help, especially for people who are kind of like in their own homes and stuck, um, mm. and there's, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff on it. It's not nothing new, but people will pretend that it is. It's, um, there's an idea mm. which has been around for so many years, uh, obviously, it's it's a simple thing. It's like it's decluttering, but there's these people who made All millions right. of pounds calling it minimalistic living, um, and it's just a simple thing. Okay. Um, so they came up with an idea on this where it's like you go through your house, you draw wherever it is, nothing too big. Just look at your drawer, take just one thing out of it that you don't need anymore. Yeah. So by doing that, so you detach yourself from item whatever. Now, the next time you open the drawer, mm. there's fewer things in there. Now, a lot of people are stuck yeah. in their homes right now. So one of the easiest ideas is to not do a massive declutter. We're not saying to spend hours, days. Just take one thing out okay, yeah. at, a, at a day, one a day. Now, this lockdown is six weeks, maybe longer. But if you just did that for a couple of weeks, you'll, you'll feel like inside that you'll feel decluttered as well. You feel like a weight is lifted so because you're not spending you're not going out of your way wasting an entire saturday or sunday that you're not working on doing that you're just taking one thing out and you could do this mm-hmm. as you come downstairs to make your lunch you could do this yeah. in in the morning you do this at night time it's just one little thing by doing that the house feels bigger it's weird it will because you're just taking mm-hmm. one thing away that used to sit there it's gathering dust. That's actually giving me another idea. I'll come back up to in a minute. But yeah, I imagine the um, the just just decluttering. Uh, for, well, first of all, I'll say don't get obsessed with it and get carried away and end up with no. nothing. And because <laughs> you could end up in bad times, okay? and and you might regret it. So yeah, be sensible yeah. about it. But <laughs> I imagine just having removing something from your shelf or some. Thing or, or draw or getting rid of it just means you can look at it a bit more positively yes because maybe you're trapped within those four walls you get fed up with it but you can actually look over there and go oh i did that yes and actually get a positive attitude out of your toward in within yourself a bit of positivity 
definitely yeah. see that's 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 kind of like the little goals thing where you can go for a little walk you'll come home and you'll feel lighter knowing that something you've you've achieved something for the day just little things yeah. is what what you want to do um, obviously you could paint a wall and that would obviously make you feel so much better but that's a big piece of work to do <laughs> so not not taking away de yeah. deck you can decorate homes, decorate rooms. You could do that. that yeah. Definitely make you feel better. But we're just coming up with little things. So this is just a simple. I've got I finally got through to this drawer. I'm just going to take one thing out or a cupboard, whatever it is. Yeah. Just one thing. Just start. You small. know what? Well, I'm talking about this. I I I, uh, I got a new uh, bookshelf in the second lockdown. A, a, a massive new shelf and everything. Yeah. It's a big project and. It just made me feel so good to look at the stuff all spread out a bit better yeah. and feel good about that. But it's, it is starting to just get um, kind of stuck again. And I think from this, what you're talking about, I'm not going to declutter it and throw my stuff out. No way. <laughs> but what I might do, I think, is actually just maybe rearrange a little bit of the shelf each day. And then yes. I can look up and go, oh, look, I've, I've rearranged it again. And that looks a bit nicer. I've done something different. Yeah, because okay. what we don't want to do is if you embark on a big project and you fail, that puts you in a worse state than when you started. Yeah. So what okay. we want to do is just <clears throat> come up with a way of just doing something simple that's achievable for everyone, a small goal. Um, and what, what I found is when I've talked about this idea before, I've seen a lot of people do it, is by a certain period of time, you'll feel more confident that that drawer, that cupboard, you might just take three or four mm. things out, come a week from there and tidy the entire thing. Now, every day you walk past that thing, you'll feel so much good. You feel yeah. so better inside of you that you finally got around to. Yes. Yeah. You feel three months of not doing anything to it, and then you have to start doing something else. Positive again. Uh, there, there, there's, there's always, there's always <laughs> things you can do that will make you feel better yeah. about, the, about your environment. Because this, this might not change for a long time. Your environment, your home, whatever you're renting, living space is is kind of like the place so you you got to make it work for you so whatever little things you can start by doing yes. it makes you feel so much better yes excellent good idea uh, so for my next idea then i guess is it's not really an idea of something you can do um and it's probably more based in mental health in general um and that's if you if you just don't feel like anything you're doing really feels any good um, and that is just sort of trying to focus on well yeah the things we sort of talked about you know the fact that you are amazing you're doing the best you, you can and you're doing a, do, you're doing great things but um, also actually just trying to concentrate on some of the things that you are doing like that you wouldn't have noticed before uh, maybe your every little action and just and just trying to um, think about them in a positive way just thinking I feel positive about doing these things because you don't need to feel negative about pretty much anything in your life. The majority of people, everything in your life could be seen in a positive way. Yeah. And and kind of you kind of forget that. And if you can just sort of start to envision yourself, envision things you're doing and feel them in a positive way, um, which that doesn't sound like a very um, malleable thing that you can do. So it's quite hard to describe, but I don't know if you if you can sort of if, uh, relate to that at all. Sort of that that just. If, but if you're like, I, I'm now getting up. I'm now walking to another room. Rather than just sort of feeling depressed about everything that's going on, try and try and just try to think about uh, how you are actually everything you're doing is positive, and it's moving forward somewhere. Yeah. I guess. Because we're not, we feel like we're not, we're kind of trapped as well. You know, where are we going? Are we ever going to get to the end of this lockdown? But actually, just remember, this is the big. I guess that's part of it as well is remembering you're at the beginning of your story, and there's so much ahead, and everything you're doing is positive. So, I guess that comes under meditation and sort of different things, ways of thinking. But um, that's one way that I've found positive uh, every now and then to sort of. It, it it's really encouraging i have to say it's like it can completely change how you feel about yourself and your body and the activities you're doing um it can turn an, a null nothingness into into a a real living experience for for a little while 
Um, it has it, it has its caveats. You know, you, you still sometimes you'll feel good days. Sometimes you won't. Um, yes. Yeah. Again, don't feel under pressure to always feel the, the best you can. Sometimes you're not going to feel that. Um, and on, I guess on the opposite end of the scale is um, a, a, a while ago I'd, I was I was feeling like I wanted to have a kind of depressing playlist for music. Um, some some people I think listening to music is another good one that if you don't do that it might actually help you sort of feel a bit more positive but um i, I thought about putting together a depressing playlist i wasn't feeling too good at all but actually when i put that um, playlist together and I, I sort of sunk myself into it eventually i did it um I actually it to indulge in it a little actually helped in a small way um to actually just just appreciate the fact that yeah you're not always going to feel the the, the best yeah. You can feel down sometimes, and you can feel that, and it's not—it's not a bad thing to be doing that. It's part of the human experience. You shouldn't feel ashamed of it, and then get back to doing other positive things wherever you can. No, that's 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 a good point because there'll be a lot of people who just think everything they do is wrong, or it's it. They feel that it's wrong, or they feel like it's it's down. But actually, even creating a playlist that's being creative in picking songs mm. uh, pl maybe playing an intro or whatever you know when you press play to add it before you add your playlist together because you're doing something out of your norm you feel like you accomplish something yeah even if you sit online yeah, and yeah. create whatever youtube playlist or a spotify playlist or apple music whatever whatever you're using just just that then sense of i felt like i've done something then you'll listen to the music and in some cases like you said the music will take you elsewhere take you back to memories of when you were you know younger or you know when when you did something so that playlist will evolve mm, true, yeah. and then you'll be like oh remember when this song used to play and then i used to hear song this and then that like you say started off as maybe a depressing playlist but as time goes on okay. you might start adding other songs into there and you might take others yeah. out and that playlist will always evolve could as your mood changes yeah could happen Oh yeah, you... I mean, my my personal playlist I was making, I, I, it did start to move towards you know, looking on the other side a bit more positivity. Um, but yeah, that, that wasn't the main focus, but it it does, I guess, in some way, it does help you lead yourself through from one state to another in that way as well. Yeah, good point. Um, it's the same with sort of writing um, poetry for me that I used to do, um, and I I feel like I'm not really doing as much now. Um, but it, sometimes writing about your situation, you know, if you're in a dark place or yes. stuck, you can write about it and it helps it sort of um, declutter it, sort of get it out in the open. And also maybe by the end of writing, you you might have shown yourself like where you can go ahead and and some of the more positive sides of things. So, yeah, yeah we're, we're not sponsored by anyone, but um, Blogger is a free no. blogging app, which we might put some of this stuff on, only because we, we, we want to try and get more traffic to the podcast, a uh, selfish reason. But I can't um, handle yeah. the pressure of more stuff. <laughs> you will, you will like. <laughs> I'll have to somehow do it. But um, it, it's, it's a great way of just writing your thoughts down. What you may not realize is how many people are going through something similar. So you might inspire someone mm. without even knowing it. Um, so if you use a blog site, put put your thoughts down. You know, you don't have to write a lot. So you can just do. You can say, you know what, every day I'll write a couple of minutes, and whatever it change, whatever it ends at, I'll hit save, and then I'll come back and I'll yeah. write another paragraph or something. So you don't have to spend hours creating a blog. Don't put pressure on yourself that this blog is going to be this massive thing. Just write something mm. that you're feeling that day. Turn it to a journal, maybe, yeah. or if you need it to be. Just just small bits on there, like you said, poetry. That's a good one. You can put that on there. You can write it and you put it put it on the internet on those kind of mm -hmm. sites. And if you make it searchable, someone might find it and someone might be able to relate. Yeah. And even even just getting that validation from someone else to say, I was going to the same thing. Thank you for putting that out there. Both of you will feel mm -hmm. so good that you you were able to share something with someone and also help someone else. And someone else would feel, I can't believe someone else is going through the same thing as I am, yeah. but I can't put it down in words the way they did. Good idea. My, my only caveat to that is is um, is do it for yourself as well. Yes. Like, don't Start do it for off. anyone else. 
Yeah. And and don't expect people to be watching it and like checking how many visitors you had because, as we know here, that, that you are our only viewer so far. Yeah, and listen. So, yes. We we are only our, our only listener and. Uh, yeah, we, we can't be expecting the numbers because otherwise we'd be depressed. Um, yes, exactly. You know, you've, got do it, you've got to do it for yourself and you're one listener um, and appreciate that. that yes, time. exactly. It it does make a big difference. Like if you got one person, like if everybody did something and it affected one person, it helped just one person. And yeah. that's huge ripples. It's massive. So, yeah, you know, whatever you yeah. I suppose are this. Yeah, I suppose you never know what that one person then goes on to do and how yeah. they interact with other people and that's you know what we're here in the universe to do surely is to just interact with each other yes i mean have little we, knock on effects on each other and um, we go back to when we watch verses with snoop dogg and dmx and snoop dogg says one line to dmx dmx turns that into mm. a song it becomes one of like a big song from that album it becomes like an anthem for him like, you don't realize yeah. that one thing snoop said or did affected someone else yeah. in such a positive way that they were able to take, yeah, take so that. <laughs> you have to be a lyrical genius, though. You have. To, there's a bit more to it. Yeah, that too. But yes, that too. Um, it's it's incredible you know, how. I think how, the yeah. amount of times that the um, fate steps in for DMX, so and yes. you know, you can't. I, I can't help but see the fact that the the way that he always incorporates some sort of prayer into his albums. And then he always gets that reward in some way of having a bit more luck. And just, it seems like it's inspired and come from somewhere. It's, it's something that I just, I just look at and think, oh, that's cool. That's nice. Nice to see it happening somewhere in the world. Yes. And so, yeah, so, you, you know, as big as Snoop is, he, he inspired, like, DMX. So, you know, anyone can inspire anyone. You wouldn't even know it. Yeah, that's true, yeah. So have you got um, any more ideas? Or is that it? So that that's kind of like I mean the the basic ones that everyone's going to say is you got a phone, send a message to a friend, a family member, someone you haven't spoken to in a while. Um, you you don't know what they're going through, but that might make them feel better. It might make yeah. them feel like there's someone okay. that is listening. I think um, the D12 song, which is how come Eminem's first line he says in the song is, "You've got a phone." Um, why didn't you mm. call me? Something like that. And in, yeah. even in the 1 800 song by um, Logic, he says, You know, I've got a phone, but nobody's asking how, how you are, where you've been, where I'm going. Yeah. You, you never realize how important those things could mean to someone. So, yeah. Yeah. That's the situation you end up in is that you, no one's calling anyone because they, they're expecting someone else to call. Yes. And, you know, you've got to make the call because if everyone thinks that way, no one's going to call no one. Or if you're not going to make the call, I also just advertise that you're that you're open to calls. Yes. Just, the just other way write, around. Go yeah. on your go on Facebook or whatever and say, hey, um, um, if anyone wants to call me, you can. If you if you need someone to talk to, or maybe I'm just I'm free if anyone wants to give me a call. Uh, that could get depressing if no one calls, I guess. But just make sure you've got a backup plan. Um, you know, just make just make yourself make yourself available, I guess. Yeah. And this is this is like you said, if you're in the forum and you're on a group and you say, look, um, guys, if anyone is anyone wants to speak about this new new thing that's coming up or any any anything they're going through, you you can start the conversation about, you know, um, this thing that you want to preview. So if it's sporting metaphor, like, you know, there's mm. loads of football games on. I could be on a football one saying, guys, how's it? How's everyone excited for the weekend games? Uh, does anybody mm-hmm. want to talk about preview of so you start your conversation about that topic but then off of that you can just ask them questions about how things are and stuff and you share your stuff or you'll feel much better because mm. the nfl Good is plan. on right now and i think it's coming to the super bowl soon <laughs> we think yeah what we don't that, follow basketball? I forget. basketball yes <laughs> uh, so uh, for, for our for our listeners this is this is just a specific peek behind the curtains uh, we follow your sports <laughs> yes <laughs> the super bowl's coming soon well, in uh, in february so <laughs> again that's that's a big big thing that people can talk about and how how it's changed from last year i'd just like to say to the our worldwide audience no offense if i don't follow your sport I don't follow the sport in my own country. I'm not a sports person. <laughs> Just so you know. 
Yeah, I mean, there's there's you, other sports that are ongoing. Sports. I, love, I love sports. them all. Yeah, yeah, loads of sports. Um, the Olympics, we don't know what's happening with that, but I'll be excited when that's yes. back on as well. Yes, if people are allowed to travel to a place. <laughs> yes, if, if you are. Again. Okay, I've got one more thing, um, one more suggestion for you to for us to come up with, right? Scenario, quick scenario. You don't have a phone. You yes. don't have internet. Yes. What do you do? <coughs> Apart from the nice fact you wouldn't be listening to this podcast, what do you do? <laughs> so this is nice and easy. So obviously, um, if you you can't walk, oh yeah, you're taking everything. You're already walking. We've already got that advice. Okay, so have we got we, any more advice? Then? Yes. So what you can do. So we we've got this two meters apart business. Um, right. you, you'll, you'll be living somewhere, I imagine. Well, make a, Even make if... a game out. It sounds like <laughs> bad advice. Make a game out of the two meters rule. <laughs> no. Um, what, I'd, what I'd suggest you do, and um, obviously, it depends on where you've been living for a while, you, you don't know your neighbors yeah. that well. And this is the crazy thing. Right. Like, um, um, you could be living in, in a house for 20 years. You know your neighbors from saying, hi, how are you doing? Why not just go over to their front door knock on the door and just have a little chat with yeah. not massive just a very small conversation just to say I mean, how are you doing yeah. just just to say um for uh, health advice day two meters apart <laughs> wear a mask um, yes obviously all, all, the, all, the, all the caps so yes <laughs> all the basic also, caps, over yeah. the garden fence um, yeah, garden fence is good, but not everyone has garden fences because a lot of people are living in flats, people are living in apartments. Also, uh, you don't want to end up in a situation where you're talking over the garden fence when someone doesn't want you to because some <laughs> they, their garden time might be their private time. Private time, yes. And, and um, one person might, one side might not understand that situation. Yeah, stick with the doors. doors. Stick with just, just a little knock on the door. Have a conversation with them. Just how how are you doing? How's things? Um, and also, yeah. this um, I read this thing about this person. Um, they were living next door. To, they were telling me that they live next door to this uh, family, and the family used to every so often knock over and say, "Oh, can we borrow something?" And then so one day, the owner of the house knocked on their house and said, "Oh, can um, can we borrow some salt?" And then mm. they came home and the child asked them, why did he ask for salt when we've got, we've got everything? She goes, basically, because then the next time they come over and ask for some, they don't feel bad because, yeah, you know, they feel true. like we've had yeah. it, you know, we've come over to yours as well. And we've asked you for something, something that, you know, you can share with us because it's not a lot. It's not massive. So if you come around next time and you need, you need to borrow like the lawnmower or you need to borrow something big. You won't feel as bad because you know that it's 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 happened yeah. almost both ways, and so something yeah. as simple as that, where a knock on the door saying, "Oh, sorry, I'm out of sugar," any chance I could, like something so dumb, even though you've got it in your own home, is yeah. how you can start that conversation. And I guess I guess in this world now where everyone is pretty much de- self-sufficient and dealing with their own, well, self-sufficient within society, that is, but uh, you know. They, they want to, they've, they've kept on top of everything themselves, they've got everything they need. It means that everyone's stuck in that situation. Yeah. So yeah, maybe just, yeah, make, having a little bit of, of need and vulnerability to so that other people can feel that they can come to you for help as well. Yeah, Great idea. I think, so in the scenario where you don't have your phone, don't have internet access, you don't listen to this podcast, but <laughs> let's yeah. put these vibes out there where you just ask for yeah. something that you already may have but just something yeah. so little that would make the other one feel needed as well. Like, oh, yeah, they came to me, yeah. they asked for thing, whatever. And you never know. Maybe when someone that's listening to the podcast on their phone, on the internet, will talk to the next door neighbour now who doesn't, and it will help. Exactly. Exactly. And, and two metres apart, wearing Two metres, yes, asking for <laughs> sugar, whatever it is. Uh, something yeah, so... Don't touch each other. Don't ask for sugar. <laughs> Leave something... that to last lockdown. <laughs> Yes, and then yeah, <laughs> and, and that conversation will snowball into something, and you, you never know what would happen. So yeah, it'd be great. Yeah. Okay. So one other thing I will say then is, um, whatever you're going through, if you if you're are feeling really down and um, you know, really negative, um, you are human. Whatever you're going through is a human thing and understandable. Talk to someone. Talk to anyone. Talk to your family. 
if you have them, your friends if you have them, your neighbours if you have to, or even phone a, a line like Samaritans or something to have someone to talk to about it. Yes. Um, just talk to someone if because your situation, however dark you might be feeling, so, uh, uh, just suggesting if that's a if that is how you're feeling, um, then however you know, however you're feeling, it is understandable and it's human. Talk to someone. Yes, no, that's a good way to end the podcast. So it's good to talk as one of the <laughs> thingies used to come up. But I can't remember one of the adverts on the UK channels used to say it's good to talk. So that's that's great advice. Oh, yeah. Um, let's leave it un, unbranded unbranded okay how can they contact us um well let's just leave it unbranded as well okay who are we put, where are we no, i'll just i'll just put it in the description below thank you everyone for listening yeah, okay yeah we're, we're my guy reviews so go to my guy reviews at instagram twitter facebook maybe no we're not on no facebook. no we couldn't get an account um instagram twitter uh, all your podcasts of choice and yeah thanks for listening thank you and in the description below yes yes (laughs) we'll be back with a a different topic idea i've got some really good ones for january uh i know january is like the most depression month of the year but yeah we've got some good ideas coming soon really thanks for listening everyone i've got i've got no ideas but we've got lots coming (laughs) from from my guy brig so i'm looking forward to that so (laughs) Thanks. Bye. See you next week. No, it's me that's talking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. You. <laughs> <laughs> My guy reviews the podcasts.